I'm pretty sure you're gonna find the perfect first luxury designer handbag for your collection. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, to my little corner of the internet where we talk about luxury designer handbags. Today I thought I'm gonna make a video um, that might help some of you out there who are still deciding which bag to pick as their first luxury designer handbag. First of all, of course, you need to ask yourself what do you want to use that bag for? Do you want to use the bag as an everyday bag? Do you want to use the bag only as a nice evening bag when you go out? Um, how durable do you need the bag to be? Which brands do you like? You know, I mean, my heart was singing, of course, for Louis Vuitton, Chanel. Chanel wasn't in my budget when I got my first luxury designer handbag. That's why I'm giving you some really nice examples today of um, the bags that you could pick. And also I will show you my first luxury designer handbag. And of course, that's a very special one. It holds a very sentimental place in my heart. <laughs> your first designer handbag, of course, is very likely to probably stay in your collection forever. So you have to ask yourself, um, will you still like that style in 20, 40, 60 years? There are definitely different thoughts that you should take into consideration when deciding which bag to pick. So yeah, let's get right into this video. My first luxury designer handbag was this beautiful Louis Vuitton bag. This is the Louis Vuitton Mirada bag in the vernis leather in the color Amarante um, with gold hardware. So um, this beauty came out in 2012 and that's when I got my first ever designer handbag and um, I remember that I was in New York with a friend and um, I did see this one on 5th Avenue in the Louis Vuitton shop and I fell head over heels in love with it. Of course I did wait until I was back home in Germany at that time um, to actually buy the bag because it's a lot cheaper to buy in Europe obviously than it is in the US or in, in Asia or anywhere else in the world. So I knew I wanted to get that one. I went home and I immediately basically picked this bag up. Yeah, I'm very very happy with this one. It has aged beautifully. There are a couple of um, wear and tear marks and if you want me to do like an in-depth review on this handbag, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will do that for you. I did pick this one um, and I have to say, of course at the time I didn't know a lot about durability of different materials and so on and so on. Luckily I did pick the right bag. The vanille leather from Louis Vuitton is absolutely incredible, it is very durable, um, you can just take it into the rain, nothing happens to the bag, you just like basically wipe the rain off the bag afterwards and it's absolutely fine. Okay, so let's have a closer look. Um, here is the beautiful Amarante vernis leather and I would say in certain lights this bag almost looks black. Um, but then as you can see how the light reflects on it and you can actually see the true color of it, which is like a rich purple, a rich aubergine kind of color. So yeah, I'm still very much in love with this um, bag and yeah, I'm very happy that this was my first designer handbag. And I want to give you like a little inspiration um, if you are about to choose your first luxury designer handbag soon, simply because most people of course would probably tell you to go for the Louis Vuitton Speedy or the Louis Vuitton Neverfull or the Louis Vuitton Alma simply because they are the classics of the house. Um, and they are great, great bags. I do have them in my collection as well. Um, but I think the first designer handbag should be something really special, something you will, you know, remember forever. I just want to give you maybe a little bit of inspiration if you're looking for something that is not entirely the norm. Um, so, of course, those three bags are amazing bags and if you are looking for an everyday bag and you don't want to worry about the canvas or anything, then I say definitely do go for them. Buy whatever makes your heart sing. <laughs> but yeah, so um, those are amazing examples, of course, for Louis Vuitton. If you want to go with um, Chanel, of course, there is your classic flat bag, there is your reissue if you want to have something that's a little bit more understated. Like I said, my first choice was my Louis Vuitton Mirada bag and um, I also do have another um, Louis Vuitton bag in the vernis leather and that is this beautiful um, Louis Vuitton Pasadena bag. And this is in the color magenta. 
magenta, magenta, I don't know. <laughs> it's the same beautiful leather. It is very carefree. Um, I think it captures color amazingly. I mean, if we compare those, you know, you have to know, I'm a very big sucker for all kinds of black bags with gold hardware, but also all kinds of like bags that come in purple shades, purple and pink shades. <laughs> That's definitely um, what I always feel I'm gravitating towards. So um, yeah, as you can see, so I'm trying to capture the color for you. So these two bags, they are the only ones in my collection from Louis Vuitton in the vernis leather. And yeah, I'm a very, very big fan of the vernis leather. Um, there is currently another bag that recently came out from Louis Vuitton and it's called the Louis Vuitton Spring Street bag. Um, and I'm really um, interested in seeing this one in person because I think it is a very beautiful bag. Um, so, you know, that's just another great example, I think, for a beautiful bag that Louis Vuitton released in the Vernis leather. So, um, yeah, very happy with these two. Um, like I said, you don't have to worry. You can just take them into the rain. Nothing happens to it. And even with the Louis Vuitton um, monogram pieces, they do all have the Vachetta leather. So, of course, you have to take care. Um, if you don't want to get water stains on your Vachetta leather, especially in the early months where you start carrying your bag, it hasn't developed a patina yet, so you should definitely take care of it. Some people are treating it. I would advise against treating your leather bags because it might always, you know, Louis Vuitton themselves, they are advising against treating your natural leather with any kinds of products. Just let it age naturally, let it become this beautiful honey patina over time and then you know you're protected as well so yeah this is just like a good example i think for bags you could go for if you want to have something a little bit different and like i said i can only recommend um the vernis leather from louis vuitton it's absolutely a beautiful leather it's a durable leather and um yeah i mean how amazing do they look <laughs> So um, both of these bags do come with a leather strap, so I'm gonna attach these now and then show you how they look like when you're actually carrying the bag. Yeah, so here's the beautiful Louis Vuitton Pasadena bag and I prefer to wear the bag just on the crook of my arm. Um, I think that's definitely a very cute way of wearing it. However, you do have the option of carrying it with a strap if you would like to. And I th still think it looks pretty nice. Um, it hits you at a really nice spot. Um, you can also just, of course, swing the back to your back. Um, and yeah, it's definitely a very comfortable way of carrying it. However, of course, that gives it a little bit more of a casual look. Um, so yeah, like I said, I definitely prefer to carry the bag just like either handheld in one of my hands or my favorite way is to just carry it on the crook of my arm. And it just looks very classic and chic, I think. So yeah, this is definitely my favorite way for the Pasadena bag. And here's the beautiful Mirada bag. As you can see, my strap is a little bit bended at the moment because it's been stored inside the bag for a while. Um, also with this bag, I tend to only, whoops, to only carry it basically handheld because I think it's a very chic way of carrying the bag. This one only comes with a really, really small handle. So you, there's no chance of like wearing the bag on the crook of your arm that doesn't work however um, I think it is still very nice if you just wear it like a little trunk bag basically but you do have the option of carrying this bag um, with the shoulder strap as well and you can either just wear it cross body so as you can see it does sit pretty high on me um, but however I mean I'm 5'7 5'8 somebody who is a little bit shorter maybe it hits them at the perfect spot um, but what I also like to do is just to carry it basically on one of my shoulders, then it sits at a really nice spot. So yeah, that's definitely a great way of carrying this bag. So yeah, I mean, what can I say? Um, those two are definitely great, great bags. And if you are still interested in finding the Murada bag, there are several on the pre-loved market for actually a pretty good price. I've just recently came across one here in London in one of the vintage shops. Um, that one was even in, in absolute pristine condition almost as well. And um, 
yeah, I think this is definitely a good starter bag. So is the Pasadena, of course. Um, and this one, I think you might still be able to find it in store. I'm not 100% sure if they still have it on the website or if they don't. Um, but they were gone for a little while, um, in between 2017, 2019 or something. But then they came back. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know if they're currently available or if they have been discontinued again. But also this one is probably pretty easy to find on the pre-loved market. So, yeah, see what you can find, see what colors you like, what leathers you like. And I'm pretty sure you're going to find the perfect first luxury designer handbag. For your collection so yeah guys i hope that you did enjoy this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe join our little bag family here we are a luxury disease ridden family <laughs> that's just the truth <laughs> but um yeah here we do share the same passion the same kind of obsession so yeah please join us and i see you guys very very soon bye